In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add water to your map. This water could be a pool, it could be an ocean, it could be just puddles within your bumpy terrain, it could be whatever you want. This water can work in just about any environment, and it's very simple to do, as long as you know what textures to use and what uh, entities need to be within your map. And I'm going to show you how to do that, all that right now. Uh, we're gonna, here's what I've done is I've loaded up Hammer, a test map. Uh, it's just a simple room with uh, basic textures, uh, your, your player spawn point, a couple of lights. We don't need anything more than that. I'm going to go ahead and create my uh, water. It's just going to be a block within here. I'm going to hit uh, Shift B. Before I do that, I'm going to browse along and pick the texture I want it to be to save some time. The texture is going to be located under Tools. Okay, so I'm going to filter down here with Tools and then go over to No Draw because we want the Tools No Draw texture here. Uh, this is important because I'll show you in just a second here. I'm going to draw out the brush first. I'm going to fill up most of the room, not all of the room, so that we have this wall of water that we can walk right into for test purposes here. And it's going to be deep enough for the player to be completely submerged. There we go. Let's go ahead and create this brush with the No Draw texture. Okay, now what I was saying is that it has to be the no-draw texture because the no-draw needs to be touching any wall surfaces. Otherwise, you'll get this weird uh, type of shimmering effect, something strange or, or flashing effect of the textures that is not very good, which is why we just make the whole thing with no-draw and then texture the visible surfaces with the water that we want. This water brush could be several brushes all touching each other as long as those touching surfaces are also no draw, then you won't even see the seam between the water. It'll all be seamless. So now let's texture our visible surfaces here. In this case we have two visible surfaces, not just the top, but also this front one. So I'm gonna go ahead and create and, and find a new texture. I'm gonna select my texture tool here and I'm gonna browse for one underwater. I'm gonna type in water in my filter, let it filter through. And down here is a pretty good looking water. It is called nature water underscore DX70. So I'm gonna select that and I should have selected my surface before I went ahead and browsed for that. There we go. And I'm going to apply that texture there. And I am going to apply that texture here. What I did was I just hit the, the right mouse button here. It, it's a quick way to copy that texture right over. Okay, that's it. Now we have basic water, but there's one more thing. Since this is just a test map, I can close this out. Uh, I don't have an environmental cube map. What that is, is it says, okay, here's my environment. It's got this kind of lighting things. Take the environment into effect. Right now, if I render this out, it's going to have some weird reflections. If any reflections at all, it won't look very good. But if I put an environmental cube map entity in here, it'll take the environment into account whenever it does its reflections, its refractions of everything that's going on within the map. So I am going to create that entity. I'm going to hit the Shift D to open up my entity tool. I'm going to just throw the entity somewhere in my map since there isn't anyone in here, anyone, any entity in here like that already. Uh, let's go down here. I already have environmental cube map selected. I'm going to hit enter. There we go. And I am done. That's it. We can go ahead and save this. I'm going to save this. This is my test map. I'm going to go ahead and compile this. Hit F9, bring up the compile. All normal. Hit enter. Let it compile. Keep my eye on that window for any errors that might pop up. I'm done. Now I'm going to copy my file over. Uh, what I've, where I'm going is over to here. My, uh, I am in Program Files, Valve, Steam, Steam Apps, my username, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. Eight, oh, I'm going to go over to, actually, my username, Source SDK, HL2 NP Sample Content Maps. Okay, that's where my test map compiled. If you're not sure where this is, look it up in the forums or watch one of my other videos where I go through all the steps. I'm just trying to save some time here. And then let's go over to my Half-Life 2 Deathmatch HLM2MP maps file. That's a lot to say. And I'm going to paste it right in there over my old one. And I'm going to load up the game and test it and show you what it looks like. Okay, I have Half-Life 2 Deathmatch open up here. I'm going to hit the tilde key to bring down on my console. I'm going to type in map. Uh, my test is the name of my map, and I'm going to load it up. All right, here we are within the game. Now, it looks a little weird. There's some nice reflections because of the light that's on the other side of us. We, we're getting those nice reflections because we put the environmental cube map in there. Let's go into the water. See, no texture flickering or anything, so that means we have everything looking good there. Looks good from up here. I can float up. Beautiful water in there, and it looks like somebody has joined our game. Even though we're just running a test here, that's kind of funny. And that's it. There you go. 
That's how we put water in our maps. All right. Happy mapping.